We are back out here on the Subaru with the air conditioning issue. Now, if you've seen in the previous three or four videos of the process I went through where the customer used the can, he got refrigerant in it, and it was coming out 39 degrees out of the dash. Sitting out here in the sun, I think it was 72 or 74 degrees. You're going to have to go back and look at the first video I did when this vehicle rolled in. So we got 39 degrees coming out of the dashboard, sitting, baking in the sun, mild warm day, 222 grams, and it should have been, if uh, Apple will do with this, yeah, we go Apple, it should have been 500 grams. So it had 220 grams, it should have been 500 grams, and it had a beautiful 39 degrees coming out of the dash when it came in but we had a problem with heating of the discharge line and the compressor was running really hot the high side actually went all the way up to what was that one video I went to 180 psi with 220 the low side pressure if you go back and look on there if I showed it was somewhere around 24 psi on the low side with 220 grams of refrigerant now it has 500 grams of refrigerant let's take a look here at the pressure right now i'm looking at the line temp so right now the line temp coming out of the condenser liquid line is 88 degrees fahrenheit and our suction line goes down to 33 degrees fahrenheit out the suction line so that's the line temperature right there let's go look at our pressure there's our pressures and you can hear the clutch cycling on and off so let's look at our high side pressure our high side pressure 157 155 155 oh we got 160 right there and our low side pressure has been doing 24 22 22 24 25 22 24 so 500 grams 24 psi and it goes up to is when it shut it cycles back on it cycles on at 36 34 come on 33 34 that's its cycle on time that's its cut in time the cut out time is like 22 but basically we got 24 psi low side 500 grams when we had 222 grams when it came in it had 24 psi but we had a higher high side doesn't less refrigerant equal more pressure or less pressure on the high side and less pressure on the low side not in this case and not in many cases anymore this is why all those old stogie fossils dinosaurs that keep telling young guys how to do air conditioning by whacking off the can into the car and looking for a certain presser or a certain temperature out of the dash in this case it was coming out 39 degrees out with half the refrigerant charge sitting in the sun so let's go inside and get out some of this glare out of here get that out of the way did i get rid of glare not really not successful sorry about that Okay, so you can see we're at idle. And you can see how this clutch is just cycling on and off, on and off, on and off. You can see we're sitting in the sun. You can see where I'm taking the temperature from. Let's get uh, back to line temp. Let's go back here. So here's our superheat. And you gotta wait for the compressor to kick in when it's kicking in you get the real superheat but the problem is it's cycling so fast you cannot get an accurate superheat or a subcooling you just get something in between so there's no way under these circumstances can you ever use superheat or subcooling with this rapid cycling to try to do the system okay so i'm going to try to get it as hot as my, oh and it has a hepa filter in it so it has restricted airflow I blew out the HEPA filter trying to get it clean so I could get all the airflow over the evaporator that I possibly can. Actually, let's get some outside air on here. And let's go to, see there's our, oops, there's our temperature. Oh, 
let's look at the discharge temperature on the compressor. Let's go do that. So we're gonna switch over that clamp to the discharge and it went as high as 182 degrees. So I'm taking it off the liquid line so you can see where I'm taking it off. See the little red signet insignia right there? That means it's the high side temperature. So I'm gonna take it off the liquid line and I'm gonna put it on, you can see the scrape marks where I took it before, right there. So now we're taking the temperature right off the compressor. Now this is with 500 grams of refrigerant. It had 200 grams of refrigerant before. So let's go to pressure or dry bulb. And you can see the temperature moved up. Okay, let's see, go right. Temperature, I want that temperature right there. Right, you can see where I took it off and then I put it onto, so I took it off of the liquid line off the condenser. And then I put it on the discharge line of the compressor. Now I'm gonna take it up to 1400 RPMs like I did it for 1415. And it went all the way up to 203 degrees Fahrenheit at 1400 RPM. So let's repeat the same thing over again. And let's see if I could get it up there. Let's see, watch, there's, there's our temperature. There's our RPMs. I'm gonna try to simulate the other video. Come on, stop kicking out the clutch. And uh, it's hard to get it up there. Come on, come on, there you go. The clutch is kicking up and in and out and the idle is going up and down. But as you can see, uh, let me put it on, uh, get it off recycle. I was looking for minimum temperature it won't stay running long enough. So let's make it run a little longer. There. Now we're taking in that hot engine heat from the recycle. Because it was starving before, it would stay running at that idle. But now you could see it go up. Because the evaporator is getting a heat load on it, that hot engine air temperature, that's a hundred and some degrees, is now going dumping right into the evaporator. Because right there, you see my Stratus leak detector right there? So that hot engine heat is coming down and feeding right into the crawl and being pulled right in and going right over the evaporator, loading up the evaporator with hot engine heat off the exhaust manifold and out of the radiator. 173. You see our RPMs. And you can see we're still cycling. You can see the engine idle pop up and down, up and down every now and then. Now, if you're driving down the road, this would be totally different. Pressures and temperatures would be down. But this is like stop and go traffic. You're sitting in a stoplight, or you're going five miles an hour on the highway with 10,000 other cars in front of you. This is the condition you'd be in, except not at 1400 RPMs. You'd just be idle. But what I'm trying to do is drive the temperature up right now. And you have to do this car after car after do. Do this a couple thousand times, and you'll see some patterns. But we're going into changing times now. We're going into electric vehicles with heat pumps. Oh, I got a good video coming up um, on Tesla heat pumps. I'm going to put a link and I'm going to do a little thing might release tonight or even before this video. We'll see. 179. Come on, hit 180. There, 181 degrees. So before... When I did this test, I hit 203 degrees. Come on, get up there. That's about real slow. But before it got up there real fast to 203 degrees, I think I, on the last video, I took snapshots and I had them on my iPad and show you 203 degrees was the compressor discharge with 220 grams of refrigerant. Now we have 500 grams of refrigerant. We have more refrigerant, we have lower pressure, and we have lower temperature, discharge temperature. So let's go back. So on this car, 
right there there's the rpms there's the pressure we're hitting two on this car we are hitting 200 psi what was our uh let me let me go back to pictures let's go back here pictures photos 205 psi uh 205 degrees fahrenheit this is the discharge and you see how fast that was as soon as i kicked up the idle look at how fast one two within three minutes we we're at 205 degrees that was the discharge line with 220 grams of refrigerant and that was our pressure 187 psi so at 187 psi with 220 grams we had 205 degrees fahrenheit and what do we have now we got we got the pressure up because we have 500 grams and we are sitting out here in the sun job link 197 200 psi and it's cycling because we're reaching minimum temperature and our minimum temperature right now here's our temperature and you can see where it changed from rapid to a little longer because i got that really hot heat coming off right now dumping right into the evaporator and we are 43 degrees 43 degrees 43 degrees that's where it's cycling off the clutch is kicking off at 43 degrees 500 grams but when i had 222 grams in there from the customer who used the can 39 degrees fahrenheit was coming out of the dash with less refrigerant run that mind blow through your head all right guys i'll see you now commercial and refrigeration guys they know what's going on and uh but automotive guys don't get taught this stuff that's just a sad state of our industry and let's come back here oh let me get the idle up for uh super let's look at super heat and subcooling is doing at that 14 1500 gram mark come on 14 15 14 15 right about there you're cycling too fast though there we go about 1400 rpms oh that's wrong on the sub cooling don't look at that because i'm on the vapor line i'm yeah i'm on the high pressure vapor look at the sub let's look at the superheat when you see the pressure going up you can actually see the superheat happening in real time And you can tell when the clutch cycles off because then the low side goes up instantly. All right, gentlemen, I hope somebody learned something from this that half the refrigerant can give you colder temperatures out of the dash, but it's also starving your compressor for cool refrigerant flow and oil return. See you guys later.